Your goodness is running after. Your goodness is running after. Your goodness is running after. Matthew 6 is running after me. Matthew 6 15. He said, If you refuse to do your part, you cut yourself off from God's part. I'm teaching on the responsibility component of Christianity. The responsibility component of Christianity. Now, the reason why we are failing to attract as Christians people to Jesus is because our life is producing results. And the reason why our life is not producing results is not because God's word is not true. The Bible calls it the infallible word of God. But because of the fact that if we refuse to do our part, we, not him, cut off ourselves from his own part. I was listening to a message by Pastor Iade Boy. He came to a meeting and said, so I won't say much today, but the of the Bible is in one word. Nothing goes for nothing. That word kept me on fire for the past four to five years. Nothing for nothing. Because success leaves clues. Do you understand that? You can't buy experience by impartation. So when you see men of experience speaking, you need to sit down to listen. It doesn't matter how you know sweet and how easy it is that you now hear God's voice. You still need the experience of a light to help you understand how to interpret that voice. It doesn't matter the light you are now seeing. You need the experience of others. So when he said that word, I was not the same again. Nothing goes for nothing. If I want something from God, then there is a price I must pay. Salvation is free, but I don't get it like that. If I have no part to play in salvation, then why comes not everyone is saved because Jesus has died for the whole world? He said that a man will his own heart believe, then he will confess Romans chapter 10 and verse 10 with his own mouth, then he shall that's my part. Because when we don't have the perfect perspective of grace, we make certain abuses of Christianity. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 10. Paul said, I am what I am by the grace. He said, nevertheless, this grace bestowed on me was not what? In vain. It made me walk harder. Now, where the Christian stops is in the fact that I am what I am by grace. He forgets his own path that the grace comes to do something to a man. To put the super of God upon the natural of a man. And listening to great servant of God, Bishop David Oedepo, he said every revelation that leaves absolute responsibility on God is a useless one. Because it is not only God that makes things possible, it is with God, you and him, that makes things what? Possible. He said faith without work is what? Death. He said show me your faith and I will show you my faith works. Why? Faith does not abide alone. The Bible says faith that walketh by love. Faith that walk with patience. One time I listened to great servant of God, Pastor Chris Yakilome, and he said he said, the problem with Christians is that they will tell themselves, what will be will be. Uh -uh. What will be will not be. It is what you allow to be. You have to wake up and make things happen. You have to play your participatory role in Christianity. Bishop Waleoke said, he said, God is not sentimental as regards his dealing with men in every race and in every generation. He works based on his principles and his word. He's not, he's not tribalistic. And say he's from my tribe, so I show him mercy. He's from my tribe. I like him, that is why. No! When it comes to the dealings of God and his people, there is no sentiments attached. He plays his part, then he expects you to what? To play your participatory role. Now listen, do we understand that what we call the Bible is scriptures? Right? When you divide that, it's a two-syllable word. When you divide that into two, you have what we call what? A script. So simply put, that this Bible is a script, a play role, where the main actor or the main character of that movie, which is Christ, and even you to participate in it to make the you know when they give you a script and say we want to add a movie to make it a reality right you and your job is to ensure that your own part 
you do it there then we bring it to say this movie is now what it, that is why it is called script it is not just something you read but something you make your mind to participate in that script you find your role in the inside of it just like the three cripples who was in the day the days of um, Syria war with Israel said to themselves why stay we here and die that's how some of us are when even when prophetic words are released towards our direction we just sit down and expect that the word will work out itself they've told you you are great they say there is greatness on your head do you want to wait and give birth then when you go for meeting they will tell you and your son too they will not join your son too now your son too has greatness the responsibility component of Christianity when they came in Exodus chapter 14 when they came before the Red Sea the Bible said that pray the Holy Ghost one minute the, the Bible says that when before the Red Sea God said to Moses stretch forth your rod and divide it who told look at what the Bible tells us the Bible now tells us when we read Psalms he said and by the blast of his nostrils he commanded a mighty east wind that parted the Red Sea but what did we see in the physical a man had to carry his rod has like divide you if Moses decides to stand there the Red Sea will never divide and it will be that God is no longer powerful that's what that's the protocol of scripture that I must what I see in the spiritual realm in the physical then it materialize miracles are products of spiritual he stretched for his divided it what special in what Joshua did and the people of Israel that will bring down a wall of Jericho the Bible says that seven horse will stay side to side that's the thickness of the wall of Jericho seven horse stay side to side should I prove to you that they had no physical involvement in it the Bible said that the wall collapsed listen read your Bible well it didn't mean the wall fell down the wall literally was sank inside should I shock you the third miracle Do you understand that Rehab had a house the strip of the covenant she made with the people of the spies how come something was collapsing and the house was intact did it suspend itself in the air but what the bible says that Joshua was obligated to carry out the natural for God to put the super on top why by through that city without saying a word for seven days and that the se people can call him a fool People can say you are stupid and say, my friend, go and do something useful. But that's the instruction. He walked through that city around with the children. People were laughing at them and say, ah, no, ho. no, even shove if you don't have gone. You want to bring such a war. And they went like that. Mm. We call it the silence. Mm. And they kept like that. On the seventh day, the Bible said they go around seven times. They went like that. And at the last time, he said, everyone, give a shot then the wall collapsed if they did nothing the wall will stand that way Joshua chapter 6 John chapter 2 the Bible says and this miracle did Jesus and he revealed his glory do you know that you can make seasons to happen when they are not yet time he said whatever he asks you to do so maybe by experience by the little insight and revelation she has about scripture understood that you will be asked to do something you will be asked to do something so when you come when you sit down before god listen to his word what you should be looking for is what is your scriptural responsibility this is how people make a shipwreck of their faith how they make god look like he's a liar how they make it look like the church only wastes the time of people christians are to be the most enviable beings on the surface of the earth Hey, oh, 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 to the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. That's why you see Job in Job 34 32. He said, Lord, that which I see not, show me thou. For every place you are stranded, there is a step you need to take that you need to know. For every place you are cheated in life, for every place you are discarded, you are you are frustrated in life, there is something for you to do to get out of that condition. Find your participatory role in this movie called The Scripts. Find your role. 
you have been given the script your job is to make it happen in reality are we following you just act your own part then the main character who is the invisible god will act his own part and make that movie complete in reality then we have what we now call scriptures it's not for you to be quoting now first first corinthians chapter 3 responsibility component of christianity for instance now you are trusting god for a change in your academies you want to see what is wrong somewhere what do you need to do number one you pray james chapter 1 verse 5 he said he that lacketh wisdom let him what pray pray number two what do you do you study is that not what the bible says study to show yourself approved unto god it simply means you have no right to call him for help when you've not done your own part study to show yourself approved unto god what do you do again he said he that walketh with the wise shall be wise but the companions of fool shall be the responsibility component of christianity i want to get out of this pain from the scriptures what is my role to play god is always ready to play his own role it takes him nothing to write a miracle for a believer but the problem is that we have left absolute responsibility on god we have made it to look like some people are just lucky god just choose to have luck on some people first corinthians 3 and verse 6 it says paul planted apollo water it and god gives what the increase so there must first be what a planting right i play my part there must be a watering i continue to give him my best then what's the role of god he multiplies my effort with increase that's why i tell people when you come to me and say papa the grace of excellence that's working in your life i need is if i lay my hands on you the way i know that you have collected the grace is that you will begin to read, read like a mad person then i know ah it has dropped you will read crazily take responsibility for your life you see that now when you begin to read genesis chapter 41 i'll give you a second example you are reading genesis 41 and you are you are trusting god lord i want to be influential i want influence in life and you are studying the story of joseph right meditating on that scripture because that's what meditation does meditation makes us a part of the story meditation is carrying yourself into the scripture to sit in reality by the visualization of your mind how it actually happened so that you now know the role that you have towards play and what were the two things upon joseph that provoked influence number one is what favor so if you need influence in life what's the first thing you should fight for favor you pray for the favor of god and not just the favor two components makes for influence in life number two is competence the favor of god brought him there but it was his competence that made pharaoh say there is no other one that has such kind of a wisdom you can't have a baby saloon and when you bar people all of them must have bad head and you speak in tongues babbing them paleku calabash where there are spiritual things do spiritual things where you need your expertise put it in play that's where the problem that, that's where the problem lies in christianity we carry our spirituality to everything so to get influence you need what favor and you need what competence joshua 1 and verse 8 he said that this book of the law will not depart from thy mouth you will meditate on it day and night the word meditate means sago. you visualize it you visualize is it genesis 24 verse 63 out of the bible tells us that isaac went to the wilderness to go meditate it was the the lifestyle of the ancients they stay on it after the service now say papa touch on the responsibility component of faith lord i want a change in this matter let me read through scripture people that attain this thing i want to attain let me read through life and see physical realities on the earth physical success leaves clues let me see that what did they do did they do to get this result then let me play my part not palakata vayakapara and i think it ends there so you see when you are now reading the book of esther and you are trusting god for favor you now begin to study and meditate on that scripture esther esther operated in uncommon favor in fact she was called in the bible the woman of favor adasa lord how, the, how did she touch this favor then i enter into the movie and esther came into jerusalem esther came into jerusalem and you know um the man that, that was asked to look over them saw her and took favor on her of her right so number one i begin to talk about presentability i talked about it yesterday and the fiscality of favor you must look good do you understand that you can't look naturally depressing to people people are going through a lot they don't want you to join it 
Bible says in Proverbs, he that wants friends must first show himself what? Friendly. Presentability. She was presentable. Then I begin to look. What was the second thing I can see that Esther did to attract favor? Prayers. Yes, prayer can provoke favor. The Bible says. She in fact, you know she had prayer warriors because she said to Mordecai, she said, go on, you and the Jews should pray. Why me and my maidens? So they had it as a constant life. They didn't say, we want to try to see if we can pray. We will do what we have been used to. You see that? Are, are we following? Then the next thing we talk about is that she has good relationship skills. Did you find out that when Esther came the first day, she didn't ask for a request? You, the first time somebody, you have put your, put your family problem, your personal problem, your in-laws problem on the person. The second time, she still did not ask the king anything. Say, I just want to make you happy. Prepare a nice dish for him. Is that not so? Are we learning something now? The responsibility component. As you breathe into that scripture, you are putting yourself in the shoe of Esther to see what she did. Now we've talked of one thing. She was presentable. Physicality of evil. You can't be having body odor everywhere. But your neighbor look good. It's a responsibility part of favor. Have you not seen every great preacher look good? Because there's a way you'll be presented with the people who think you are suffering. People give money to those they think don't need it. I'm telling you how life works. So somebody will be so in a church that he knows they don't need my money. But when there's a way he comes and see the pastor, see if I drop this seed, if I, this seed, ah, uh, with the way he's, all he's, this is inside. This money is going to him. So we talked about what? Prayers. You can pray for the favor of God on your life. Do we understand that? You can pray. Number three, we talked about relationship, what? Skills. We are talking about to provoke favor. But making you to understand what you are supposed to do when you stay with the word, when you get into, this is what we talk, you are walking into scriptures. Number four, we now find out that come, she is a valuable person. Value attracts favor. She had value. 1 Kings 18, 41 to 46. Now we read the story of Elijah. How that he held the abundance of rain, right? After confronting the prophet of Baal. Is that not so? And then he said to Ahab, Ahab, run for I hear the abundance. And then he went to pray and all that. Not And the Bible says when he was done, he ran faster than Ahab that had gone seven hours ahead. So I'm now looking at that scripture. This is the mystery of speed. So how do I get speed in life? Number one is what? Vision. He saw in a vision the abundance of rain coming. You can't live a purposeless life and want to move forward. That's why the Bible says, Ephesians 5, verse 18, it says, walk circumspectly, redeeming the time. Are we following for the days are evil? Now, how do you redeem the time? Next verse, it says, knowing what the will of the Lord is. If you know what the will of the Lord is, have you not gained speed? Instead of you wasting your time doing something else, then you come later to go back to what he said you should do. He had vision. Number two, the Bible says, and the hand of the Lord came upon him. Number two was what? Unction. So where there is vision and unction, the anointing, you will see a man with speed. So I begin to understand. Oh, now, this is my part to play. God's part is to provoke the speed. My own part is to ensure I have what vision for my life. There is a goal in front of me I'm pursuing. And then I pray for what? The hand of the Lord upon me. I want power with God, right? Now, what are the things I begin to look through scripture? What are the experiences? The men who had power with God, what did they do? Right? I begin to study men like Elijah, Paul, the apostles. Then I found that number one, they had encounter with the spirit of power in the place of prayer. This way, men given to prayer to the Holy Ghost there. The Bible says they pray continuously. So the first thing to have power is to have what encounter with the spirit of what prayer, the spirit of power. That's when when men are endued. Second Kings, the Bible says, and that when Elijah, Elijah sent his servant to go anoint Jehu, he told him to take him into the inner chamber. He said, take him inside. That's where men are poured oil. The inner chamber. Number two, I begin to find out that these men were men of great revelations. So I found out that you must have encounter with the spirit of what? Revelation. Encounter with the word. There is a light that hits you from the world and impacts on your unusual power. Because the truth men know sets them free. You just know, God, I can never be attacked in my life again. Something hits you and I can never be scared of a witch in my life. 
begin to study that some of these men they had encounter with what carriers of power so when i put these three things in place i must operate in what power encounters with men of power you are trusting god for a change in your financial life is that not so you trust god so what are the things you need to know i begin to study scripture what is my role in changing my finances i found out that i must be judicious in my lifestyle of giving right i must be faithful in my tithing i must be faithful to my offerings i must operate a life of sacrifice where it is called for proverbs chapter 11 20 24 he said there is that scatter it and yet increase it there is that withhold it more than its meat and yet it tended toward poverty so i make sure that law is in place is activated then i go to 28 verse 8 he said and this is where the lord, lord will command the blessing he will command it in the field he will command it in the works of what your hands then i found out that i must be doing something so when the lord puts his blessing it will reflect on that work are, are we getting it now i don't just stay i do and say i'm blessed amen you will stay all your life shouting i receive i must get my hands to do something because for every spiritual reality there must be a physical representation i'm telling you where the missing link is do you understand that's why i said the fastest way to produce miracles from scripture is to operate informative professor what we call prophetic acts you get it now jesus could have as well commanded wine to come from the atmosphere and appear but he needed something that looks like wine first on the earth which was water then he put the anointing on it to twist it back to wine you see that now are we following so we call those things prophetic acts you must give a physical representation that's when you go to the abolish places you see all this wood there now they construct a figure that represents what they want that spirit and then when that spirit sees the figure it houses it so you make sure your hands is doing what something and then when your hands is doing something you begin to learn from scripture how i must be competent i must put excellence in what i am doing i must put excellence he said thou good and faithful servant the guy was good he could multiply money he had the financial intelligence these things are things I must take the pain to learn. It's not to me shouting, I receive. I receive every time. The responsibility component of Christianity. You get it now? I find out that I need to work with wise men. If I work with poor people, I'll be the fifth one. If I work with four poor people, I'll be the fifth one. If I work with four rich men, I'll be the fifth one. Because he that walketh with the wise. The Bible said the result is that he will one day become like them. But a companion of fools so i look at people who are taking their financial life serious and i get hooked to them to see what they are doing legally and train me teach me do we understand that and then i begin to see my finance not staying in church i receive i receive and you will receive all your life and nothing will change do you know even paul the bible says paul was a tent maker working with his own hands paul the great apostle paul that disciple nation he had something doing his hands he will bless the works of what your hands let your hand find something doing second chronicles 27 verse 6 he said and joram became mighty because he prepared his ways before the lord his god he didn't say that jotam was mighty because god loved him what did he do he prepared his ways so trusting god for greatness in life what is your responsibility Are we following? You are trusting God in the next few years to come. You want to be the president of Nigeria. They gave you one department in church with three members. Now they are one and a half. You that want to become Nigeria president. Some of you complain about the president. You are terrible. You are, you are more than them. They gave you department. Everybody is living because of you. And you want your dream is to become. You say, I want to have companies like Dangote. You are not even managing prayer department or maybe ocean department in 10 branches just one they are now one and a half and you want company like dangote everything you won't see as a change will require you to make a change any future you desire that will leave you the way you are now will not be different from your past any future you desire that will require you to remain the way you are now will not be different from your past Hebrews 7 7 he said but without any controversy the lesser is blessed of what now that is what happened when jesus came 
when Jesus came at that point in Jordan he was completely in his humanity and since he was still completely in his humanity being born of Mary in the physical sense remember that the Bible has tells us that there was no one born of a woman that is greater than John except Adam he was not born of a woman then Jesus was not yet the second Adam. he was still the child of Mary he had to bow to John but when the Holy Ghost came on him that he became the son of God the beloved son then there was a switch because of a protocol you must take a slope to get what the flow now when you are done with that the Bible now tells us in Timothy 1 verse 6 that you Paul said remember the gift that was placed on you by the laying of hands do well to what fan it to flame so somebody thinks once you just place their hand and impact them with grace that's all they can go they have open church run away for your life international mission and then they begin to fight themselves just be struggling here and there because they didn't understand that it is what response there is the responsibility part of christianity challenge yourself challenge so some of you saying i don't know people don't like me i'm a lady people don't ask me out look at the way you look like your grandmother you are resembling somebody's village goddess was that how they saw esther the responsibility i'm making you understand i kept shouting to my sisters i said you are seeing that men are opening their eyes now i said better get serious with your life gone are those days i want to marry rich man rich men too are looking for rich ladies yes. they are looking for what now substance oil 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 not just virginity oil the church has taught ladies only purity of virginity but the even virgins can be foolish the difference there was oil yeah. capacity substance Take your life serious. Become responsible. Have you not heard that Nehemiah had to seek audience to the king? And it was when he was speaking to the king, then the Bible said, and God now gave him favor. Not inside his room. He prayed inside his room and went out to go and meet the king. Tell them, take your life serious. Don't think anybody is doing you. I need influence. I said, you must be what? Having the favor of God in your life. And you must be very good so difficult to be replaced very good if you play your part he will play his part once you are sure you played your leave it the outcome he can put the blessing and give the increase just be sure that you played your role lift up your hands and thank him thank him and say lord help me to take responsibility from today responsibility is that okay yes. when you read god's word take responsibility do we understand that galatians 4 as long as an heir remains a child right he's not better now his servant responsibility though he be lord of all but he's kept on that good to tutors and governors till the time appointed what determines the time appointed maturity when he grows up so please grow up the lord bless you Amen. the lord will change your story Lord, we change your situation from Amen. today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please never be comfortable with mediocrity. Never be comfortable with a pain. Fight your way to a glorious life. That's what God has called you to. An excellent life. Amen. I declare, I declare, the Lord make you ten times better. Amen. The Lord bless and give you. Amen. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Amen. And I lift up the light of his glory.